Yeah, g'day there. Now, right behind me, we've got a Yamaha 9.9 high thrust four stroke engine. These things have been going around for years and a favourite for multi hull sailors as uh, their simplistic nature and uh, trustworthiness uh, hardly ever stop serving you. But uh, this little one, uh, what we're chasing at the moment is uh, this thing wouldn't start the other day. Um, you know, you, the normal things you do in terms of checking fuel flow and those sorts of things quickly uh, alarmed us to the fact that uh, we weren't getting a spark. And uh, that's more significant than the usual carburetor flow problems that we have. Now, I've been chasing this for a few days. Luckily, I've got two of these engines, so I've swapped all through the electrics. And the significant thing was is there's a pair of brown and blue wires that appear from underneath the flywheel. And uh, these actually are from a charge coil, this little fella here. You can't really pick that up. This little charge coil, which uh, by appearance is, uh, is the thing that generates the, uh, the power that drives the CDI, the little computer device that fires the spark for these engines, does a bit of engine management and the like. So I'm a bit suspicious. This little one here that I've pulled out, uh, doing an ohm uh, resistance test across the circuit here. It's an open circuit, which is quite suspicious. Obviously, it should be a bunch of wires going from one end to the other, obviously tightly wound around this little thing here. So open circuit on this one. I've managed to track down uh, off my other engine. And off a third engine that I had lying around in my yard, we actually uh, tracked down that uh, this thing should be generating a 396 odd ohm resistance. And this one here, open circuit. So I've just replaced the, um, the one off the uh, other engine onto here. And we're going to see whether that uh, has uh, resolved it for us. Let's have a bit of a closer look as well. So here we actually have the top of the engine. I've re removed the flywheel with uh, a basic flywheel puller here. This little doohickey, I bought that at Super Cheap Autos so for $35. Yeah, one thing to note here is actually the, these particular bolts that, uh, are the ones that retain the little cover off of um, off your uh, engine control um, cowling there, I guess you call it. Uh, those bolts are actually pretty much ideal to work with uh, old mate here. I end up having to chop off the bottom of that, that's significant as well. But uh, on top, once we've removed the flywheel, there we have it. So these two here are actually uh, the charge coil that uh, is these things are rated for about 10 amps at uh, 13 odd and a half volts for charging your batteries back up and here's the replacement uh, Stator I think they're called but it's basically another coil that generates power flows out through the brown and blue wires here off and around and into the computer uh, interface which is in behind the heat sink in Housies. Okay, what else have we learned? We've also got here, this seems to be superfluous for in terms of testing we've got a pink wire and a yellow red wire that run out to our engine um, warning light that's pretty much superfluous uh, what else have we got here the, these green wires here are the ones that run off of your actual charge coil so the engine will actually run without those as well what uh, other ones have we got here significant white this white one that comes from the ignition circuit the switch appears to be the uh, ones that controls the shorting that'll actually um, stop your engine from running or starting or whatever but that one must be attached for it to work and here's your brown one as well that one there is actually for the um, that is the one that switches the alternate or the um, starter motor on so that one has to be connected for your engine to fire at least you can have in the on position have the engine running but this brown one is the one that actually runs the current through and uh, tells the uh, starter motor to fire uh, what else we got left blue one Blue one. Oh yeah, that's the uh, electric choke. The electric choke, so you trace that back down in here and it comes uh, through to around about here, somewhere. Uh, doo -doo -doo, in here, yeah, yeah. So that runs our electric choke here, back to the uh, carburetor. So, um, yeah, that's about it for the lesson for now. Let's uh, get back to trying to get this thing going. Okay, we've just uh, put, reattached the flywheel. I've done my best to talk back up the old flywheel on top here with its uh, nut here. Bit of a nonsense, nonsense here. I have to find myself actually tying off the uh, flywheel a little bit to uh, give it the bracing to actually you know, allow me to use the gear puller or, in fact, disengage the flywheel top nut here. It's got a bit of torque in it. I'm just going to make it up, leave it as is. But uh, let's see uh, what happens when we turn the key. Bravo. Oh, hey, about that for music, eh? So uh, there we have it. We've uh, successfully uh, tracked down this fault in this engine. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I've swapped all the electrics through this thing, but uh, the thing was, that really did stand out all the way along is that nasty little coil of wires that goes underneath the flywheel. A real pain in the ass to get at. Once, uh, but once you uh, actually know about, gee whiz, it's not actually that hard. All right, that's enough for uh, Yamaha 99 maintenance for this little episode. Let's go sailing.